All right, welcome back. Now, we are just about five minutes away from the beginning of the vice presidential debate. We'll see if they kind of run a little late like the last debate did with, I think, Hillary Clinton was trying to adjust her buttons on her Mao costume and all of that. Well, you know, we'll see. Maybe it'll get started right on time here, set to be about 8 o'clock. Um, That's conspiracy theory. Actually, what was going on was they were uh, fixing the earpiece of Lester Holt. Oh. Remember that? Well, what about the little rat that was running around with the folders, too? Yeah, so right. was he, it the folder had to get, exchange? There was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. Hillary had to get her baby blood transfusion. They had to fix Lester <laughs> Holt's earpiece. And then they could go on with trying to gang up on Donald Trump. And they had to mess with his microphone levels, which they came out and later admitted that they did. Yeah, three days later, they did admit after but that was a they let Hillary theory. Clinton make fun of him. And, and actually, Michelle Obama did, too. She's like, so tapped her mic, like, oh, I'm having problems. And it's like... Oh, let's all just poke fun and make fun. It's so frustrating fighting against all the lies, all the propaganda. It is in your face, thanks to the repeal of the Smith Month Act in 2013, where they're now legally allowed to push propaganda to the U.S. And they're like going to town with it. Um, oh yeah, let's not forget about the uh, the signals there, the hand gestures she was giving to Lester Holt, which there was a world champion poker player who came out and said, if they if if I had seen that and I was the head of a casino, that's the like oldest tell in the book right there. Well, I'm no world uh, class poker player, but even I could tell that that was extremely sketchy <laughs> at the least. You don't see that, uh, especially the way it was coordinated. And then she would look over Lester and then he would uh, do something to change the pace or to change the tone of the debate right after she did it. Right. She did this weird thing back when uh, Richard Reeves asked her about her email server being hacked. And when she was, when he's asking her the question, she's like poking into her lip like, <clears throat> ah, and she's like, that's absolutely untrue. But well, it's like, she's like going in she was making some weird the... adjustment. Uh, ah, yeah. Don't lie. Don't lie. Really weird. And then, and then her <laughs> handler was like, all right, here we, here we go. And, and then she goes, hey, here we go. And then they walk off. Like, <laughs> literally, like, she's... That was a great weather out here today, huh? several capacitors and circuits, I think. Well, that's her, there. like, go-to response when they ask her a tough question. She's like, well, how great weather we're having today, right? Oh, okay, into my uh, handicap van. Yeah, it's it'll definitely... This is another good one. She's in Cleveland. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, yeah, there's the shot right there. Look at her. She's digging into her lip. Look at that. Like, what is that? What is Get, that? She's getting the crusties out. What is that? That's Someone weird. And look at her handle. They're freaking out. And the lady behind her is like, Infowars. Ugh. Uh, uh, and then the Secret Service agent looks like people. he's kind of happy about it. Yeah. But, you know, absolutely untrue. And then <laughs> my favorite is at the debate or uh, at her speech in Cleveland. She starts pointing to the people, but she can't talk. And then she lets out a... <laughs> 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 so, You're right. You're right. Someone actually tweeted me a video today where she was like, you know, getting in her nose and then she like went like that and wiped it on some little kid. But she went into like, hey, kid, oh. tell me what do you want to happen to America? But I'm just a why is she so gross? What happened to the green globlets that she spit out? Were those oh. put into like some Who sort of a uh, aquarium to be raised aquarium. into? into well, those are the two guys on the, the two aliens on the Simpsons now. They have tentacles and ah. they ran for president too. Uh, what was point. it like Zork and Bork or something? Yeah. Yeah. Zork and Bork. Well, we're just nice about, guys. you know, two minutes away. And so we are going to do our best to not talk over the debate. I don't really know how this is supposed to are. work. This is kind of our... There's <laughs> there the they uh, are. evolved form <laughs> of Hib Hillary's globlets. <laughs> it didn't take long. It didn't take long. They've, they've grown mm. teeth now and one eyeball, and they're keeping an eye on Hillary Clinton, making sure wow. she follows through with the goblin agenda. The green goblin agenda. But so how, how is this going to work? So... We're going to try and stay quiet. We have heard your voices. And, of course, we have our own uh, live feed going of this. So we don't have to talk over the debate. But I, I feel like if you want to interject, if something is just totally outrageous and you want to call it out, we're going to talk a little bit. I know David Knight is going to be filing some reports just like we did last time. We got a lot of those uh, reports kind of fact-checking in real time. So whatever we're able to do with this debate tonight, those are also going to be going up on the YouTube channel right away. So be sure to check those out, retweet them, share them on your Facebook so that we can get this fact checking trending in real time uh, on our end. And of course, we will be checking in with Donald J. Trump to see his epic Twitter trolling mm. of the debate.
It'll be uh, people are saying that this is going to be the VP debate is going to be the most normal thing about the election. So you know, we, we also have a poll on Twitter, guys. It's uh, up there on your screen. What do you? Who do you think will win tonight's VP debate? Watch it live, and then Pence or Kane. It looks like we've got a twenty two hundred votes so far. That's uh, that's an interesting poll because uh, how how does how does one win? A vice presidential debate. You know, I'm wondering what people think. What does it take for Pence By to not win? Losing. What does it take for <laughs> Kane to win? But I mean, right. how? I mean, they Are, kind of. It's like they've both already lost in the eyes of the, whoever the opposer is. You know, we've already got people deciding. So I mean, yeah. And and has a vice presidential candidate ever really swayed an undecided voter? Were they like, oh, you know, I was undecided, but you know that VP. Yeah, voice. that Mike Pence really swung me. Yeah. Tr Trump's going to be live tweeting as well, so this should be yeah. interesting. We'll yeah, definitely no, follow the Trump it's live not 3 tweets. It's three a.m., so who knows? It, it, this should be yeah. pretty normal. Well, and I love how tweets. Hillary Clinton tried to come after him, saying, "Oh, we really rattled him after that last debate. He was up tweeting at three in the morning, and then he came back saying." Well, at least we all know I'll be up at three in the morning to answer Ooh. phone calls of anyone who. Well, and I'll tell you what, though, that's Move something. B, get out the way. <laughs> that's something that they could actually use against Trump. They could try to bait him into something, knowing he's live tweeting. Right. And then, like, you know, inject something into the debate rhetoric to try to trigger him and get him to tweet something, perhaps, that uh, they can use against him. Good point. So that could be something that we might want to see. But, and then you know, that's, that'll Trump, be the only news. It won't be about the fact that Russia. He doesn't. And, he he really doesn't give a damn, does he? I mean, he just doesn't give a damn. He's like, you know what? I'll tweet live. I'll stay up till 3 a.m. I'll talk about Miss Piggy Beauty Queens. I'll say build a wall. Screw you. <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I am gonna. I want to take this one last phone call uh, from Roy in Canada, and then I'm going to clear the board um, because we're going to go to your phone calls after the debate. I don't want to keep anyone else waiting. Um, are we able to pull up Roy in Canada? Because you want to talk about... The fact that uh, you're witnessing the manipulation there in Canada by the media. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, it's going to be kind of interesting to see what happens with uh, Pence tonight. Because, uh, I mean, you, you've got pretty much like what passed almost 16 years where you know, you've had vice presidents like uh, Biden and Cheney, Cheney sorry. And, uh, you know, you've got like a generation that hasn't... Uh, you, you know, seeing what an actual vice president could, could possibly be. So, I mean, he's got the opportunity to go after uh, Hillary and Kane on the stuff that Trump was too much of a gentleman to go on, you know, you know, so. Exactly. And that would certainly make it thrilling for the rest of us who are all tuning in to see. So what are you seeing there in Canada as far as the media manipulating it in favor of Hillary Clinton? Ooh, shocking. Oh, it's crazy. They tried every everything like uh, that they weren't representing him when uh, he had the Trump University with the case with the uh, the judge who was uh, had the La Raza affiliation. Right. They yeah. Any effective reporting there. They had CTV, CBC and Global all pretty much every time it's it's Hillary and just her looking presidential. And then Trump, what's the, the, the biggest thing that the mainstream media has against them? So you guys are not alone. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much, Roy, for, for watching the show along with us here at InfoWars and for helping to fight the good fight on the other side. How about you know, make uh, the vice president great again? Yeah. Dick Cheney and Joe Biden. These guys are, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, depressed trombone sound after those two Yeah. Days. Yeah, well, and Dick you've got Cheney Dick Cheney, evil. who's a warmonger, and then you've got Joe Biden, who can't help but keeps it, keep, just loves Creepy touching Joe little Biden. kids. Creepy Uncle Absolute Joe freak. Biden. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to go ahead and clear the board of the phone calls. Um, I don't, I guess those other two weren't even typed in anyway, so I don't want to keep people holding, but we are going to take your calls once the debate is over. We want to see what people think of of the performance tonight and if they're you know feeling any of these potential presidents because let's not forget they are just one heartbeat away as people like to say and i don't know it's kind of maybe a little bit frightening that no one really knows who this tim kane guy is but he's actually been in the you know kind of in the pocket hey guys before we start for, for a well, while let's, let's hit that clip again of of on msnbc now getting trolled by one of our um, Fine. I guess one of our listeners, who fellow went to Info it. Warriors. Yeah, yeah, one of our fellow Info Warriors. We haven't seen the other guy come come forward. I've heard different theories that yeah, he just disappeared. Yeah, he disappeared. We don't know if the security got him or maybe he knew somebody in um, with within Fox and was working. That's how he's able to get back there like that because he was dressed up kind of conservatively. So who knows? But we haven't seen him yet. But let's go ahead and play this uh, clip. This is a man on MSNBC being interviewed, and, and he nails it. He did exactly what you need to do. So uh, here we so go. So epic. 
failed businessman, or maybe he didn't perform very well in some of his business endeavors. But I think one of the kind of the things that we really need to be looking at in this debate is that Bill Clinton is a rapist. Infowars.com. Infowars.com. Bill Clinton's a rapist. Bill Clinton okay. is a rapist. All right. Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton so is a rapist. He, he knew Bill he Clinton a is a rapist. So like, let's, time. can we all? Yeah, that's right. Up? He knew he had a minute and he used that minute to change the world, you MSNBC fop. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I love how he has the glasses on, you know, the, the like, uh, oh ultimate my God, troll he glasses. bad about Bill Clinton. Somebody, <laughs> I don't know what to do here. Oh, my gosh. Ah! That's cut, cut, cut. That's why I love Tucker Carlson's response when the, the guy was behind him going, Bill Clinton's a rapist. He just <laughs> He just laughed starts laughing. Because he knew exactly what was going on. And you know what? Tucker Carlson, I think he's on the so, right hey. side of a history so, here. Uh, I'm not sure when Alex Jones, I guess he's been, uh, making this, you know, Cree, uh, for, a, uh, for a while to come out and call Bill Clinton a rapist on uh, mainstream media and everything, mm -hmm. but it, we're starting to see the effects. That the, was uh, massive. Bill Clinton rape shirt gets on Fox, MSNBC interviews, uh, Bill Clinton rape conspiracy theorist. Bill Clinton speaks at Ohio University. Someone, uh, spray, spray paints, paints the Bill Clinton rapes on the wall. Walkway, yeah, and this. And there's the article from Fox News. And every yeah, as soon the guy as it happened, started it all. Yeah, as soon as it Alex happens, Jones. they all these other websites then have to report about it because it is news. And I mean, it goes viral. And like you're saying, yeah, he used that one minute to change the world, to change because look you know there that. is a whole generation of young people and, who have no idea about the Clintons. And look what he took over the strut your mutt segment. Yeah, I mean, There's literally. <laughs> An issue of no significance. It had strut nothing to mutt. do with politics. Bill there's, Clinton likes to strut his mutt. You know, there's all kinds of families, you know, just like tuning in. Oh, I want to learn about and strut your mutt. The He's and then them, all right. people that, you know, maybe they don't even watch late night news or, or hard hitting news or whatever, because they just want to learn about puppies and kittens and watch their cat videos. They got a little hit of some hard truth hit, hit him right with the there. bill clinton rape <laughs> boom and then you've got danny williams too i mean i'm telling you bill clinton is having a tough week right now look at him look at him <laughs> you know oh i love you it you know what i just gotta say this and and we salute this patriot even though we don't know who he is yet but whoever, does, whoever does it next uh try to just be oh. a little more um i don't know uh, under control of the situation i think this guy got a little excited well, he did okay, an awesome job so. but we don't want you to get carted off by security who's then could potentially beat you or imprison you something like that but you know what hey it's Disappear a free country you. You are a free man with red hot blood going through your veins. Now there's actually I bet actually you like to eat. A, I bet you like making children. He likes big <laughs> he likes eating steak every night. There's actually it's funny. There's actually conspiracies starting to circulate on the internet. If you zoom in on the picture of the guy who had the Bill Clinton rape shirt on that got onto the uh, Tucker, Tucker Carlson Fox segment, people actually think he looks like a young Alex Jones. It's kind of funny. I've seen the pictures, I'm not going to lie. Um, but uh, I don't think this is a Danny Williams, Bill Clinton situation we have going. Yeah, here. no, I don't think so. I don't think uh, Alex would be. But we love to, you know, all the conspiracy <laughs> theories. Here they come. The no names, potential future presidents. Tim Kaine, he just doesn't. He, you know, he yeah. just looks like a scoundrel, doesn't he? He does. That's what I'm saying. He like looks Joe Biden like the and guy. Cheney. They did too. Yeah. Well, he looks like the guy from House of Cards where it's like he's, you know, all well put together and just super friendly and nice. But behind the scenes, he knows all the people, shakes all the hands, has all the connections and is just biding his time for when it is his time. And potentially, you know, it could be right now in an election cycle where he knows that the president might get taken out. I guess uh, should well. we go live here? Are we starting this debate? I think of our first questions. Okay. So I guess we'll, uh, I guess she's just doing a brief introduction right now. Going over the rules. Sure. Like, you know, I guess you're not allowed to ask people questions. But of course, there are ways around that. You know, um, I forget who earlier was saying, uh, McBreen was actually saying, if it was me, I'd say something like, well, if I could ask one thing of Hillary Clinton, you know, so there's got to be a way to kind of get it in there without breaking the rules. I think uh, they're certainly not going to ask her. He might be making an opening statement right now. What is that lapel pin he has on? I am unsure. Anybody ever seen a lapel pin like that? Hey, uh, hey, uh, Tim is that uh, North this Korea? Lapel pin right is that here? China? This is an American flag, Tim. <laughs> you ever heard of this? What do you got on there, buddy? It's funny because Hillary Clinton didn't wear one either. I think that's, I don't know, the UN flag. What Seriously, is what is that? It's a white with a red dot in the middle. 
I've never I've never seen a lapel pin like that. And he's I don't got know if he's got two mics it. just in case one of them is bad. Hmm. Guys, are this we getting any audio an from American this? Because I can't lapel. hear. I just so. I just want. So Tim Kaine knows. I, I would hope that there he is. Uh, Thank you. If uh, if the responsibility ever fell to me in this role, uh, that I would meet it with the way that I'm going to meet the responsibility. Should I be elected vice president of the United States, and that's to bring a, a lifetime of experience. A lifetime growing up in a small town, a lifetime where I've served in the Congress of the United States, where, where I've led a state that works in the great state of Indiana. Uh, and whatever other responsibilities might follow from this, I, I would hope and frankly, Tain is I would already pray furiously writing away his response. That, that lifetime of experience. Senator Kane, on the campaign trail, you praise Secretary Clinton's character, including her commitment to public service. Yet 60% of voters don't think she's trustworthy. Why do so many people distrust her? Is it because they have questions? Why? Why? Why, do, why do so many people oh, wait, distrust her? Why, why isn't Clinton? she 50 Here's points what ahead? People should look at as they look at a public servant. Do they have a passion in their life that showed up? Before they were in public life, and have they held yeah, on power. to that passion throughout their life, regardless of whether they were in office or not, succeeding or failing? Hillary Clinton has that passion. From a time as a kid in a Methodist youth group in the suburbs of Chicago, she has been focused on serving others with a. Well, I know Hillary Clinton has pursued power, and you know, if he, he's sitting here talking about. You know, has have they started something before they got into public life and, you know, carried that on and didn't have any effect on, you know, their office. She has been in politics for decades. She had her sights on power uh, from a very young age, which is why I think she aligned with Bill Clinton. He also had his sights on power and why she was willing to look the other way through all of his scandals because she her sights were set on fundamentally changing this country and being the first woman president. We've seen an economy stifled by more taxes, more regulation, uh, a war on coal, and, and a failing health care reform come to be known as Obamacare. And the American people know that we need to make a change. And so I want to thank all of you for being, being with us tonight. I also want to thank Donald Trump. So uh, just so you guys know, we call. just uh, refreshed our feed. I have oh. to tell you, I'm a, I'm a small town boy from a place not too different from Farmville. Uh, I grew up with a cornfield in my backyard. My, my grandfather had immigrated to this country when he was about my son's age. My mom and dad uh, built a, everything that matters in a small town in southern Indiana. They built a family and a, and a good name and a business, and, and they raised a family. And I, I, I dreamed someday of representing my hometown in Washington, D.C., but I, uh, honestly, Elaine, I never imagined never imagine I'd have the opportunity to be governor of the state that I love, let alone be sitting at a table like this in this kind of a position. So to answer your question, I, I would say I, uh, I, I would hope that uh, if, uh, if the responsibility ever fell to me in this role, uh, that I would meet it with the way that I'm going to meet the responsibility should I be elected vice president of the United States. And that's to bring a, a lifetime of experience. A lifetime growing up in a small town, a lifetime where I've served in the Congress of the United States, where, where I've led a state that works in the great state of Indiana. Uh, and whatever other responsibilities might follow from this, I, I would hope and frankly I would pray to be able to meet that moment with that, that lifetime of experience. Senator Kane, on the campaign trail, you praise Secretary Clinton's character, including her commitment to public service. Yet 60% of voters don't think she's trustworthy. Why do so many people distrust her? Is it because they have questions about her emails and the Clinton family? Because she's a liar. Ooh, because she's Let me tell a liar. you why I trust Hillary Clinton. Katie, Bill Here's rapes. what people should look at as they look Email at a public scandal. servant. Do they have a passion in their life that showed up? Before they were in public life, and have they held on to that passion throughout their life, regardless of whether they were in office or not, succeeding like I, or failing? Like I said, power. Hillary Clinton has that passion from a time as a kid in a Methodist youth group in the suburbs of Chicago. Oh my goodness! She has been well, she's on a good old granny. I love special her. Special focus on on empowering families and kids. As a civil yeah, rights takes lawyer a in village. the South with the Children's Defense Fund, First Lady of Arkansas, and this country Senator um, uh, Secretary of State, it's always been about putting other. 
first. And that's a sharp contrast with Donald Trump. Donald Trump always puts himself first. Jobs creator. First. He built oh, a yeah. business career, uh, in the words of one of his own campaign staffers, off the backs of the little guy. And as Isn't this so typical? He started when asked to defend or talk Mexican about Hillary Clinton, he has to backtrack and, and attack Donald team. Trump. This is so typical. Yeah, why don't people trust her? We know she's been in office. She didn't do anything while she was there. I think she named a, a, a post office. That was one of her big official bills she was able to pass. And I can't imagine how Governor Pence can defend the insult-driven, selfish, me-first style of Donald Trump. Uh, Governor That's Pence, what he just did. His answer was insult-driven. Complete like hypocrite. The people of Haiti are wondering why don't they have uh, any of that money that went into the Clinton Foundation because she's so generous and giving. 65% feel he does not have the right kind of temperament to be president. Why do so many Americans think Mr. Trump is simply too erratic? Well, let me let me say first and foremost that uh, uh, Senator, you and Hillary Clinton would know a lot about an insult-driven campaign. Boom! It really is remarkable. At a, at a time when literally, in, in the wake of Hillary Clinton's tenure as Secretary of State, where she was the architect of the Obama administration's foreign policy, we see entire portions of the world, particularly the wider Middle East, literally spinning out of control. Mm -hmm. I mean, the situation we're watching hour by hour in Syria today is, is a result of the failed foreign policy and the weak foreign policy that Hillary Clinton helped lead in this administration and create. Mm -hmm. uh, the new, mm -hmm. newly emboldened the aggression of Russia, it. whether it was in uh, Ukraine or now you, you their heavy-handed approach. You, you, you both their heavy-handed approach. You, you both have said Vladimir Putin well, is better. Hang on. Russia. 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 Oh, pooty poo. But, to get back to the but in the midst, in the midst, you're a Russian agent. Thank you, thank you, Senator. You guys have praised Vladimir Putin as a great leader. How can they defend that? So wait a second. Now this is now Tim Kaine has just interrupted Mike Pence, and then the moderator joined in on it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Great challenge in the life of this nation. While he was dominating. Weakened America's place in the world, stifled America's economy. And I like it. The campaign Pence of Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine has been an avalanche. Didn't let it shake him up. Look, to get, to get to your question about trustworthiness, Donald Trump has built a business through hard times and through good times. He's brought an extraordinary business acumen. He's employed So you are watching the live feed of Infowars.com slash show. Spread the link. We are here covering the VP debate. Share this link. Facebook and Twitter. Infowars.com forward slash show. The trustworthiness of Hillary Clinton, and that's because they're paying attention. I mean, the reality is when she was Secretary of State, Senator, come on. She, she had a Clinton Foundation accepting contributions from foreign governments. You, and you are Donald Trump, uh, Trump supremacist. Uh, oh. let, let me talk about this Senator, issue. I think the, uh, what did he say, a Donald Trump supremacist? Is that what he just said? Did he just make that up? Or apprentice, I don't know. Well, let, let, me, let, me let, me interrupt you, let me interrupt you no. and finish my sentence if I can. Finish the Clinton Foundation accepted Ooh, he's already contributions Kane. from foreign governments and foreign donors while she was Secretary okay, of State. Okay, now I can wait. She had a private now, no, server. I, I get to wait. That now, was discovered. I did he, Senator, to keep that pay-to-play process. Uh, you have an opportunity I'm not finished talking about all of her scandals. I don't think the world's going so well, and he, you know, is going to say it's everybody's Do fault. Do you? Um, oh, it's everybody's yes. fault. <laughs> no, it's Hillary Clinton's. He literally said that. Do you know that. that Osama bin Laden was alive? Yes. Do you know that we had 175,000 troops deployed in the battlefield in Iraq and Afghanistan? Do you know that Iran was racing toward a nuclear weapon and Russia was expanding its stockpile? Under Secretary Clinton's leadership, she was part of the national team, public safety team, that, that was went selling after them weapons. And revived the dormant hunt against bin Laden and wiped him off the face of the earth. Oh she my worked gosh. to deal with the Russians to reduce their chemical yeah, weapons. Yeah, she personally stockpile. helped take him out. She worked a tough negotiation. And now with Iran is closer to having nuclear weapons than ever. Eliminate the Iranian nuclear weapons program without firing a eliminate shot. The eliminate. Eliminate. <laughs> Until you send them billions of dollars and in weapons. 75,000 American troops deployed overseas. We now have 15,000. Right. And, right. and that was a great idea. Iraq has been what? overrun by ISIS. <laughs> right. Because exactly. Hillary Clinton if you failed to, to renegotiate, more, more American troops Hillary Iraq, Clinton. Can, Hillary Clinton. Uh, this Hillary is the Clinton Democrats downplaying terror because they know that they have spread terror worldwide. Hillary Clinton was largely a part of that, and so they're downplaying playing terror here uh, once again like and overrun vast areas Governor, of Iraq. President Bush said we would leave Iraq at the end of 2011. And, and Elaine, Iraq didn't want our troops to stay, and they wouldn't give us the protection for our troops. And guess what? If a nation where our troops 
are serving does not want us to stay. We're not going to stay it without them being protected. It was a failure of the Secretary of State. If Governor Mattis wants topic, to put more troops back in Iraq, There are a lot of people wondering it. in this country about the economy. Right. Let's turn to the issue of the okay. economy. According to the Nonpartisan Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget, neither of your economic plans will reduce the growing $19 trillion gross national debt. In fact, your plans would add even more to it. Both of you were governors who balanced state budgets. Are you concerned that adding more to the debt could be disastrous for the country? Governor Pence. I, I think the fact that, uh, that under this uh, past administration of which Hillary Clinton was a part, we've almost doubled the national debt uh, is atrocious. I mean, I, I'm very proud of the fact that I come from a state that works. The state of Indiana has balanced budgets. Uh, we cut taxes. We made record investments in education and in infrastructure. And I still finished my term nice with parts. $2 billion in the bank. Um, that's a little bit different than when uh, Senator Kane was governor here in Virginia. He actually, <laughs> he actually tried to raise taxes by about $4 billion. He left his state about $2 billion in the hole. The state of Indiana, we've cut unemployment. It's a democratic half, unemployment way. Doubled when he was governor, but I think I think he's a very fitting running mate for Hillary Clinton, because in in the wake of, of a season where American families are struggling in this economy, un, under the weight of higher taxes and Obamacare and the war on coal and the stifling avalanche of regulation coming out of this administration, Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine want more of the same. It really is remarkable that they, they actually are advocating a trillion dollars in tax increases, which I get that. You, you tried to raise taxes here in Virginia and were unsuccessful. But a trillion dollars <laughs> in tax increases, more regulation, more of the same war on coal, and more of Obamacare that now even former President Bill Clinton calls Obamacare a crazy plan. But Hillary Clinton and Tim <laughs> Kaine want to build on Obamacare. They want to expand it into a single-payer program. And for all the world, Hillary Clinton just thinks Obamacare is a good start. Look, Donald Trump and I have a plan to get this economy moving again. Just the way that it worked in the 1980s, just the way it worked in the 1960s. And that is by lowering taxes across the board for working families, small businesses, and family farms. Ending the war on coal that is hurting jobs and hurting this economy, even here in Virginia. Uh, repealing Obamacare, lock, stock, and barrel. And, and repealing all of the executive orders that Barack Obama has signed that are stifling economic growth in this economy. We can get America moving again. Put on top of that the kind of trade deals that will put the American worker first and you've got a prescription for real growth and when you get the economy growing Elaine that's when you can deal with the national debt when we get back to three and a half to four percent growth with Donald Trump's plan we will do then we're gonna have the resources to meet our nation's needs uh, at home and abroad and we're gonna have the ability to bring down the national debt Senator King Elaine on the economy there's a fundamental choice for the American uh, electorate do you want a your hired president and Hillary Clinton or do you want to your fired president and Donald Trump? I think yeah, you're right fired globalists. Right back on the attack. The right back on the attack. The plan, the Fire in the globalists. Your hired plan. Five components. What First jobs has she is created? Who is she hired? We invest in manufacturing infrastructure and research in the Other than people Clinton the Foundation server. people employed. Well, yeah. Our yeah, correct the record employs internet trolls. A lot of teachers, tech people to, to help her set up her private server. Tuition free college for families that make less than $125,000 a year. And then she pays Third, her daughter a million dollars fairness, a year. By raising the minimum wage so you can't work full time and be under the poverty level. And by paying women. Yeah, and that will get you fired because robot Fourth, workers will take over and you will will no longer have a job because the owner of that business won't be able to hire you at $15 an hour. So you'll get fired. Business families. My dad, who ran an iron working and welding shop, is here tonight. And fifth, we have a tax plan that targets tax relief to middle class individuals and small businesses and ask those at the very top who've benefited as we've come out of recession to pay more. The Trump plan is a different plan. It's a you're fired plan. And there's two key elements. To Ooh, they worked on those First, buzzwords, Donald Trump said didn't they? wages are too high. And both Donald Trump and Mike Pence think we ought to eliminate the federal minimum wage. Mike Pence, when he was in Congress, voted against raising agree. the minimum wage of That's about $5.15. Well, and robots he has replace been a fast food workers. Bulwark against minimum wage increases in, in Indiana. The second component of the plan is massive tax breaks for the very top. Trillions of dollars of tax breaks for people just like 
Donald Trump. And the Hillary Clinton. Elaine is that's exactly but he's not going to talk about the middle class tax breaks and, and even those making under 25000 pay no tax. The deepest oh, we're not going to talk about that. Yeah. Independent analysts say the Clinton plan would grow the economy by 10 and a half million jobs. The Trump plan would cost three and a half million jobs. And Donald Trump, why would he do this? Because Independent his tax plan people. basically helps him. And if he ever mm. met his promise... And he gave his tax returns to the American public like he said he would. After Hillary gives the emails. How much his economic plan is really a Trump first plan. On that point, Governor Pence recently, the New York Times. Yeah, it's a Trump first plan. This guy is spending millions and millions of dollars of, of his, his own, own money. money. And yet he's doing this to make money. Oh, that's right. such a joke. Said yeah. He brilliantly used the laws to pay as little tax as legally possible. Does so did Hillary, Hillary Clinton. Well, well, first, let me. So let me does anyone of their. I, I appreciate uh, you. You're hired, you're fired. Thing. No one likes uh, it, but it's legal. You use that a whole lot. And, and I think you're running that use a lot of pre done lines. I, look, <laughs> yeah. what, what you all just heard out there is more taxes, $2 trillion in more spending, more deficits, more debt, more government. And if you think that's all working, then you look at the other side of the table. I mean, the truth of the matter is the policies of this administration, which Hillary Clinton and Senator Kane want to continue, have run this economy into a ditch. We're, we're in the, we're in the slowest economic recovery since the Great Depression. 15 Governor, million there are jobs. millions more people living in poverty today than the day that Barack Obama, with Hillary Clinton at his side, and the poverty stepped level into the Oval and the median Office. income we the lowest improved level. dramatically you, look, between you, 2014 and 2015. You, you, Those I, jobs honestly, are going to go to illegal you immigrants, can roll by the way. The numbers and the, and the sunny side, but I got to tell you, people in Scranton, no different. People in Fort Wayne, Indiana, no different. I mean, this economy is struggling. And the answer to this economy is not more taxes. But it's not uh, it's to not give away tax relief spending. to the folks at the top. And, and so I, I, I am interested Governor, to hearing whether he'll defend his running mates not releasing tax. taxes. Yeah, and the, absolutely, uh, I will. Governor, I mean, with all due respect, the uh, question was about whether it seems fair to you that Mr. Trump said he brilliantly used the laws to pay as little tax as legally possible. Well, this is probably the difference between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton and Senator Kane. I mean, I mean, Hillary Clinton and Senator Kane, and, and, and God bless you for it, career public servants, that's great. Donald Trump is a businessman, not a career politician. He actually built a business. Those tax returns that, were, that came out publicly this week showed that he, he faced some pretty tough times 20 years ago. But like virtually every other business, including the New York Times not too long ago, he used what's called net operating loss. We have a tax code, Senator that actually is designed to encourage entrepreneurship. But why won't he release his tax return? Well, we're answering the question about, about uh, the business thing. Is he, I, I do his, want to come his back tax on this, return, His tax return that, that showed <clears throat> he went through a very difficult time, but he used the tax code just the way it's supposed to be used, and he did it brilliantly. How do you know he that? Created you haven't seen a wrong way because he's created a business that's worth billions of dollars to How do you know that? And with regard and, to paying you know, taxes, paying this whole riff about not paying taxes and ta federal taxes, people employee saying taxes. he didn't pay taxes for years, Donald Trump has created tens of thousands of jobs, and he's paid payroll I'll taxes, exactly. taxes, property taxes. Uh, Senator, I'm going to give you about 30 okay. seconds to the respond, and I have a question on Hillary social security. Okay. is going to raise taxes, and Governor Donald Trump and I are going to cut them. Donald Trump started this campaign in 2014. He said, if I run for president, I will absolutely release my taxes. He's broken, his he first he's broken his first promise. Second, he stood on he the stage last week. It's not a constitutional requirement to become week. president. And when Hillary said you haven't been paying taxes, he said, that makes me smart. So it's smart not to pay for our military. It's smart not to pay for veterans. It's smart not to pay for teachers. And I guess all of us who do pay for those things, I guess we're stupid. And the last thing I'll say Senator, is Senator, do you take the, all the, the deductions thing, that you're entitled the, to? The last thing I want to ask Governor Pence is I do. Exactly. Governor Pence had to give Donald Trump his tax returns to show he was qualified to be vice president. Donald Trump must give the American public his tax returns to show that he's qualified to be president, okay. and he's yeah. breaking his promise. Elaine, I have to respond to this. You get uh, very little yeah, time. I'll, I'll be, 20 seconds. I'll be, I'll be surprised if a billionaire Donald takes Trump advantage of the really messed up tax code. I am not. Disclosure, which is what the law it's requires. And, and it's said, already been admitted. Tax tax Google, tax Microsoft, tax tax uh, GE all do the exact same thing that Donald Trump does with zero taxes. Put their businesses overseas to avoid taxes, and Hillary Clinton wants to raise 
raise the business tax even higher, which is going to send those businesses the other way. It doesn't make sense. These people are insane. They're trying to trick you. To wait until it is that the other is finished. All right, Senator we're having Kay, fun up here. On the hmm. issue of Social Security, in 18 years... You are watching the live feed of Infowars.com forward slash show. Spread the link. ...for a responsible federal budget estimates your benefits could be cut by as much as $7,500 per year. What would your administration do to prevent this cut? First, we're going to protect Social Security, which was one of the greatest programs that the American government has ever done. It happened yeah, at a time Even though it's going to be broke in four life, years. Yeah, but they got to say raising that. Raising your kids, working... The, the, the entitlement programs are going broke. Teaching, greatest thing ever, according to this guy. Yeah. And Social Security has enabled people to retire with dignity and overwhelmingly not be in poverty. We have to keep it solvent, and we will keep it solvent. And we'll look for strategies like adjusting the payroll tax cap upward in order to do that. Here's what Hillary hmm. and I will not More do. taxes. I think that's what that sounds like. And I want to make this Higher very taxes. Clear. We will never, ever engage in a risky scheme to privatize Social Security. Donald Trump wrote a book, and he said Social Security is a Ponzi scheme, and privatization would be good for all of us. Wow, I just, I like Donald Trump more now. now. He well, was thanks, Donald. <laughs> about time someone said it. Privatization of Social Security. <laughs> this guy's, after this guy's President campaigning for Trump. For it, Gover uh, Congressman Pence kept pushing for it. We're going to stand up against efforts to privatize Social Security, and we'll look for ways to keep it solvent going forward, focusing primarily on more government. Tax cap. Government Senator control and more taxes. To respond. Well, I will translate uh, that for thanks, you. Thanks, Elaine. Uh, there they go again. Yeah. Okay. Don all Donald, go, Trump, go all read Donald Trump and I have said about Social Security is we're going to meet our obligations to our seniors. That's it. Go read the book. We've said we're going to meet the obligations of Medicare. Uh, that, that's what this campaign is really about, Senator. And I get this is this is the old scare tactic that but, they roll but out. Uh, you seniors. have a voting record, and, and I, get I all like of this that. guy. I'm glad I, we're I just, finally look, getting a chance I, to. I, 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 there's get a to question know. that you asked a little I bit can't earlier that I have you to won't go back defend to. your own voting record. I have to go back to. Well, I, it, well look, I'm, I'm, you're running with Hillary Clinton, who wants to raise taxes by a trillion dollars, increase spending by two trillion dollars. And you say you're going to keep the promises of Social Security. Donald Trump and I are going to cut taxes. We're going to you're, we're going to we're going to cut taxes. You're going to raise taxes so on the middle class. So we can meet the obligations of Social so Security. So is Hillary and Clinton. Medicare. All right. If we stay on the path that your party has us on. We're going to be in a in in a mountain range of debt, and we're going to face hard choices. Yeah, and gentlemen, I, I want to ask, move on. You did on ask now. this question about debt and the debt explosion on the. Trump plan is much, much bigger than anything on the Clinton side. All right, let me move on now to the issue of law enforcement and race relations. Law enforcement and race relations. <clears throat> After the Dallas police shooting, police chief David Brown said, quote, we're asking cops to do too much in this country. Every societal failure, we put it off on the cops mm -hmm. to solve. Not enough mental health funding, not enough drug addiction funding. Schools fail. Let's give it to the cops. Do we ask too much of police officers in this country? And how would you specifically address the chief's concerns, Senator King? Uh, Elaine, I think that's a very fair comment. I, I think we put a lot on police shoulders. And this is something I got a lot of scar tissue and experience on. I was a city councilman and mayor in Richmond. And when I came in, we had one of the highest homicide rates in the United States. We fought very, very hard over the course of my time in local office with our police department. And we reduced our homicide rate nearly in half. And then when I was governor of Virginia, we worked hard, too. And uh, we did something re we had really wanted to do. For the first time ever, we cracked the top 10, 10 safest states, because we worked together. Here's what I learned as a mayor and a governor. The way you make communities safer and the way you make police safer is through community policing. You build the bonds between the community and the police force, build bonds of, of understanding, and then when people feel comfortable in their communities, that gap between the police and the communities they serve narrows. And when that gap narrows, it's safer for the communities and it's safer for the police. That model still works across our country, but there are some other uh, models that don't work. An overly aggressive, more militarized model Donald Trump recently said we need to do more stop and frisk around the country. That would be a big mistake because it, it polarizes the relationship between the police and, and the community. So here's what we'll do. We'll focus on community policing. We will focus on, and, and uh, Hillary Clinton has rolled out a really comprehensive mental health reform package that she worked on with law enforcement professionals. And we will also fight the scourge of gun violence in the United States. I'm a gun owner. 
I'm a strong Second Amendment supporter. Whoa, but I got whoa, a lot of scar whoa. tissue because when I was governor of Virginia, there was a horrible shooting at Virginia Tech. And we learned that through that painful situation, that gaps in the background record check system should have been closed and it could have prevented that crime. And so we're going to work to do things like close background record checks. And if we do, we won't have the tragedies that we did. One of those killed at Virginia Tech was a guy named Liviu Labrescu. He was a 70 plus year old Romanian Holocaust survivor. He'd survived the Holocaust. Then he survived the Soviet Union takeover of his country. But then he was a visiting professor at Virginia Tech and he couldn't survive the scourge of gun violence. We can support the Second Amendment and do things like background record checks and make us safer, and that will make police safer too. Governor Pence. You know, my uncle was a cop, a career cop, uh, on the beat in uh, downtown Chicago. He was my hero when I was growing up. When we go up to visit my dad's family in Chicago, my three brothers and I would marvel at, at my uncle when he would come out in his uniform, sidearm at his side. Police officers are the best of us. I mean, men and women, white, African-American, Asian, Latino, Hispanic, they put their lives on the line every single day. And let me say, at, uh, you know, at, at the risk of agreeing with you, I, I, community <laughs> policing is a great idea. Mm -hmm. It's worked uh, to be able to really restore law and order to the cities and communities of this nation. It's probably probably why the 330,000 members of the Fraternal Order Police endorsed Donald Trump as the next president of the United States of America because they see his commitment to them. They see his commitment to law and order. But, but they also, they the reason to, uh, to use a broad brush to accuse law enforcement of, uh, of implicit bias or institutional racism. And, and that really has got to stop. I mean, when an African-American police officer in Charlotte named Brentley Vinson, an all-star football player who went to Liberty University here in the state, came home, followed his dad into law enforcement, joined the force in Charlotte, joined the force in Charlotte in 2014, was involved in a police action shooting that, that claimed the life of, of Keith, uh, Keith Lamont Scott. It, it was a tragedy. I mean, I, we, we mourn with those who mourn. We, we grieve with those who grieve. We're saddened at the loss of life. But, but Hillary Clinton actually referred to that moment as an example of implicit bias in the police force, where, where she used, when she was asked in the debate a week ago whether there was implicit bias in law enforcement, her only answer was that there's implicit bias in everyone in the United States. Can I, ex I, just, think, can I explain? I just think what we ought to do is we ought to stop seizing on these moments of tragedy. We ought to assure the public that we'll have a full and complete and transparent investigation whenever there's a loss of life because of police action. But Senator, please, you know, enough of this seeking every opportunity to demean law enforcement it, it, broadly ooh, by making Elaine, the accusation it, of implicit uh, bias every time tragedy occurs. Elaine, people shouldn't be afraid to bring up issues of bias in law enforcement. Pence and if you're afraid to have so the, afraid if, to bring if, that up. If you're afraid to have the discussion, you'll never Pain is triggered. And, and so here's, triggered. here's an example, heartbreaking. We would agree this is a heartbreaking example. The, the, the guy, Philando Castile, who was killed in St. Paul, bring, he, he was a just said, please stop worker, a, a valued these worker in a local police, school. And, here we go. and he was killed um, for no apparent reason in an incident that will be discussed. And will, and will be investigated. But when folks went and explored this situation, what they found is that Philando Castile, who was a, they called him Mr. Rogers with dreadlocks in the school that he worked, the kids loved him, that he had been stopped by police 40 or 50 times before that fatal incident. And if you look at sentencing in this country, um, African Americans and Latinos get sentenced for the same crimes at very different rates. That's we Bill know. Clinton's yeah, yeah, legislation. Uh, That's yeah. Bill Clinton's yeah. mandatory yeah. minimum yeah. legislation. Legislation and the war on drugs combined. Let's see if Tim Kaine brings that up. We'll never solve when the African, problem. Governor when Pence. an African Governor American Pence. police officer is involved in a police action shooting involving an African American, why would Hillary Clinton accuse that African American police well, it, officer of implicit I, I, I guess bias? I can't believe you are defending the position that there is no bias and it's, it's a topic I, we don't No, he's defending the truth. Not make that statement. Your I, fellow Republican, Governor Pence, Senator Tim Scott, who is African American, recently spoke on the Senate floor. He said he was stopped seven times by law enforcement in one year.
a U.S. He senator. He said, I have felt the anger, the frustration, the sadness, and the humiliation that comes with feeling like you're being targeted for nothing more than being just yourself. What would you say to Senator Scott about his experiences? Well, I have the deepest respect for Senator Scott, and, and he's a close friend. And what I would say is that we, 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 we need to adopt criminal justice reform nationally. I, I signed criminal justice reform in the state of Indiana, Senator, and we're very proud of it. I worked when I was in Congress on the Second Chance Act. We, we have got to do a better job recognizing and correcting the errors in the system that, that do reflect an institutional bias in criminal justice. But what, 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 what Donald Trump and I are saying is let's not have the reflex of assuming the worst of men and women in law enforcement. We, we truly do believe that law enforcement is not a force for racism so what or division in Senator our country. Scott, law enforcement in this country is a force for good. They, are the, they truly are people that put their lives on the line every single day. But I, I, would, I would suggest to you what we need to do is, is, is assert a stronger leadership at the national level to support law enforcement. You just heard Senator Kane reject a stop and frisk. Well, I, I would suggest to you that the families that live in our inner cities that are besieged by crime... Elaine, let Governor, me... Uh, let me, let me Scott. What, what, what would you tell and, Senator and Scott? And Lane, if, I, if I could, Jeff, but I've heard Senator Scott make that eloquent plea. And, and, and look, criminal justice about, is about respecting the law and being respected by the law. So there is a fundamental respect issue here. And, and I just want to talk about the tone that's set from the top. Donald Trump during this campaign is called Mexicans rapists and criminals. Oh He's my called women, God! Slobs, pigs, dogs, disgusting. Ooh. I don't like saying that. In he front of my quoted wife that verbatim. Mind. Hillary Clinton he said that an verbatim. A born mm. federal judge and said he was unqualified. You've been trained well, a puppy. Lawsuit because his parents were Mexican. He went after John McCain, a POW, and said he wasn't a hero because he'd been captured. He said African Americans are living in hell, and he perpetrated this outrageous and bigoted lie that President Obama is not a U.S. citizen. If you want to have a society where people are respected and respect laws, mm -hmm. you can't have somebody at the top who demeans every group that he talks about. And I just <laughs> I cannot believe... Basement dwellers, a basket of deplorables, um, super well. predators. Our next segment now, immigration. Your running mates have both this is, said... This is funny. So Mike Pence speaks and Mike Pence talks about policies and issues, whether you agree or disagree. Tim Kaine speaks and attacks Donald Trump. Right. Governor Pence. Well, Donald Trump's well laid out a plan to end illegal immigration. Once and for all in this country, we've been talking it to death for 20 years. Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine want to continue the policies of open borders, amnesty, uh, catch and release, sanctuary cities, all the things that are driving uh, that are that are driving wages down in this country, Senator. And also, uh, it, it too often, with criminal aliens in the country, it's bringing heartbreak. But I, 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 Donald Trump has a plan that he laid out in Arizona. Uh, that, that will deal systematically with illegal immigration, beginning with border security, internal enforcement. It's probably why for the first time in the history of Immigration and Customs Enforcement, their union actually endorsed Donald Trump as the next president of the United States because they know they need help to enforce the laws of this country. And, and Donald Trump has laid out a priority to remove criminal aliens, remove people that have overstayed their visas. And, and once we have accomplished all of that, which will, which will strengthen our economy, strengthen the rule of law in the country, and make our communities safer once the criminal aliens are out, then we'll deal with those that remain. Yeah. But I, I, I have to tell you, I, just, I, I was listening to the avalanche of insults coming out of Senator Kane. <laughs> <laughs> these these, these were said, Donald's. I'm says, back it up. Hold, hold, hold on a second. It's my Governor. time, Senator. Uh, it is. In fact, right. the I apologize. He says, this is your two minutes. I thanks. Apologize. I forgive you. Uh, he, he says <laughs> ours is an, an, an insult-driven campaign. Did you all just hear that? Ours is an insult-driven campaign. I mean, to be honest with you, if Donald Trump had said all the things that you said he said in the way you said he said them, he still wouldn't have a fraction of the insults that Hillary Clinton leveled when she said that half of our supporters were a basket of deplorables. Ooh. It's, it, that she said they were irredeemable. They were basket. not America.
So I mean, it's extraordinary. And then she laid one after another ism on millions of Americans who believe that we can have a stronger America at home and abroad, who believe we can get this economy moving again, who believe that we can end illegal immigration once and for all. So, Senator, this 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 uh, in, insult driven campaign. I mean, you, we're that's small potatoes compared to Hillary Clinton calling okay. Senator half Clinton. of Donald Trump's supporters a H basket of deplorables. H Hillary Clinton said something on the campaign in trail. Basement the dwellers. Next day she said, "You know what? I Bernie Sanders said that. supporters of basement look, dwellers." Look, 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 Governor, look, this look, is Senator look, Kane's two minutes, please. Look, yeah, that's right. So now we're even. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> look, look, triggered. Look, look Take your Donald Grinch Trump eyebrows somewhere apologizing else. Apologizing to John McCain for saying can't take him seriously. Did Donald Trump apologize for calling women slobs, pigs, dogs disgusting? She apologized for saying, "Governor." Did Donald just two minutes, please. Sex is xenophobic, racist. Hey, she never, she never interrupted Kane when he was interrupting Mike. What's up with that? Living in hell. Did he apologize for saying President Obama was not even a citizen of the United States? You will look in vain to see Donald Trump ever take constitutional requirement to prove that you are a citizen, a natural-born citizen, and that is a constitutional requirement. Donald Trump believes in deportation nation. You got to pick your choice. Hillary and I want a bipartisan reform that will put keeping families together as the top goal. Second, that will um, help focus enforcement efforts on those who are violent. Third, that will do more border. That's, that's the wrong. second. That will that's the second most important. Citizenship thing. For those and who that's work entirely pay wrong. Taxes, play by the rules <laughs> and take criminal background record checks. That's our proposal. So he didn't. He Donald didn't mention Trump the real proposal. To deport 16 million people. Over a hundred thousand immigrants a year through the refugee program. He does not mention that part of the proposal, though. He does not mention the fact that Hillary Clinton could have upwards of a million immigrants just forced into this country as citizens. He doesn't mention that. Go house Fast to track house, citizenship, to business to yeah. business, and check out statement. million people. And I cannot it's believe it's not. I cannot believe that Governor Pence would sit here and defend his running mate's claim that we should create a deportation force to, so that they'll all be gone. So Senator, we have a deportation force. It's called Immigrations and Customs Enforcement. And the Union for Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, for the first time in their history, endorsed Donald Trump to be the next president of the United States. So you like America. the 16 million deportation no, that's, plan? That's, Senator, that's, that's nonsense. You like the uh, look, refugee what, plan what that's going to single-handedly take down this country and... Give federal funding so Syrians can build, like rebuild Reagan's Detroit. From 1986. They call it comprehensive immigration reform on Capitol Hill. We all know the routine. It's amnesty. And you heard one of the last Bingo. things he mentioned was border security. That's how Washington always plays it. No, so I Governor, always say we're going to do this, for we're going to do that. Security we'll three years border. ago, and Governor Pence was against it. Governor, Mr. Trump Reagan has said, said a nation and... without borders is not a nation. Donald Trump is committed to restoring the borders of this nation. So, Governor, securing our how nation, would these millions of undocumented immigrants leave, would they be forcibly removed? Well, I think Donald Trump laid out a series of priorities that doesn't end with border security. It begins with border security. And, and after we secure the border, not only build a wall, but beneath the ground and, and in the air, we do internal enforcement. But he said the focus has to be on criminal aliens. We just, we just had a conversation about law enforcement. We just had a conversation about the, the violence that's besetting our cities. The, the reality is that that there's heartbreak and tragedy that has struck American families because people that came into this country illegally uh, are now involved in criminal enterprise and activity, and we don't have the resources or the will to deport them systematically. Donald Trump has said we're going to move those people out, people who've overstayed their visas, we're going to enforce the law of this country, we're going to strengthen immigration and customs enforcement with more resources and more personnel to be able to do that. And then Donald Trump has made it clear, once we've done all of those things, that we're going to reform the immigration system that I, we have, I just where have people can Governor come Pence. into this country. I, and I that's, have to. that's the order that you should do it. Border security, move it, removing criminal aliens, upholding the law, and then, then, Senator, I'll work with you when you go back to the Senate. I promise you, 
We'll work with you to reform the immigration I, system. I, I look forward to working together in whatever capacities we serve in. But <laughs> I just want to make it very, very clear that he's trying to fuzz up what Donald Trump has said. When Donald Trump spoke, no, that's what you're doing. The audience in the eye. That's what you, the, said, that's no, what the Clinton campaign and, and the Clinton News Network said, quote, and all the leftist all liberal media shills gone. do to Donald Trump. This guy Tim Kaine is really showing his true colors. A total fraud. What Donald Trump has said, and to add to it, and to add to it, and to add to it. And to add to it, we are a nation of immigrants. Mike Pence and I both are descended yeah, from immigrants. Yeah, legal immigrants. Jeez. Sometimes, you know, oh we weren't said God. so great about the Irish when they came. But we've, we've, we've done well by absorbing immigrants, and it's made our nation stronger. When Donald Trump says Mexicans are rapists and criminals, Mexican immigrants, when Donald Trump says <laughs> Mind about, you, he said that judge, after visiting judge? the border, when judge all of these people were flooding across the border, Border Patrol is begging him for help. He's the only person that actually went to the border, and of course he made those comments uh, gentlemen, like there when he witnessed it with his own eyes. Obama refused to visit the border. How can you sit here and deny the fact that there are illegal immigrants coming here and raping Raping and murdering people. Senator and getting away with that. After case after case of this. Because bin Laden is dead. The terrorist threat has decreased in some ways because an Iranian nuclear weapons program has been stopped. The terrorist threat to United States troops has been decreased in some ways because there's not 175,000. You are watching the live feed of the vice presidential debate at Infowars.com forward slash show. Spread the link. You know what? Tim Kaine just said that the risk of terrorism against police has decreased in this country. That is a absolute bold faced lie. You have mobs of people walking through the streets chanting kill police. Right. Okay. They can be directly related to Black Lives Matter. Not saying they're all attacks against cops are you know. up, but the fact that he just said that that that's not that that's not happening. Terrorism against police has increased in this country. You can thank the Obama administration for that, Tim Kaine, the head of ISIS. Second, we got to disrupt financing networks. Third, disrupt their ability to recruit on the on the internet in their safe havens. But but fourth, we also have to work with allies to share and surge intelligence. That's the Hillary Clinton plan. She's got the experience to do it. Donald Trump. Donald Trump can't start a Twitter war with Miss Universe without shooting himself in the foot. Donald Trump doesn't have a plan. He said, um, I have a secret plan. And then he said, um, I know more than all the generals about ISIL. And then he said, I'm going to call the generals to help me figure out a plan. And finally, he said, I'm going to fire all the generals. He doesn't have a plan, but he does have dangerous ideas. Here's four. He trash talks the military. The military is a disaster. <laughs> John McCain's no hero. Yeah, that's why the military the is backing him. Yeah, that's why the military endorses he Trump. He wants to tear up alliances. NATO is obsolete and will only work together with Israel if they pay big league. Third, he loves dictators. He's got kind of a personal Mount Rushmore. <clears throat> Vladimir Putin, Kim oh, Jong-un, Can I get a Doc Ham on? Oh, come and on. This Ukraine. exclusive and uh, last picture and of Tim Kaine? Donald Trump believes <laughs> he Donald look just Trump like that? believes that the world look will be him. safer if more nations have nuclear weapons. He said Saudi Arabia should get them, Japan should get them, Korea should get them. And when he, when he was confronted <laughs> with this and told, wait a minute, Terrorists could get those. Proliferation could lead to nuclear war. Here's what Donald Trump said, and I quote, go <laughs> ahead, folks, enjoy yourselves. I'd love to hear Governor Pence tell me what's so enjoyable or comical about nuclear war. Governor Pence. There's I don't know. Let's ask Hillary. There's the real dark time? heart. Because that had a lot of creative <laughs> minds in it. Well, I'm going to uh, see if you can look, defend any of it. Look, I can defend. I, 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 can, uh, I can make it very clear to the American people. After traveling millions of miles as our Secretary of State, after being the architect of the foreign policy of this administration, uh, America is less safe today than it was uh, the day that Barack Obama became President of the United States. It's absolutely inarguable. Uh, we've weakened America's place in the world. Uh, it's been a combination of factors, but mostly it's been a lack of leadership. I mean, I, I will give you, and I, I, I was in Washington, D.C. on 9-11. On I saw the clouds uh, of smoke rise from the Pentagon. I was in Virginia, where the uh, Pentagon. Oh, good for you. Uh, we all lived through that day as a nation. It was heartbreaking. Still looking for that plan. Uh, I, I want to give this president uh, credit uh, for bringing um, Osama bin Laden uh, to justice. But the truth is, Osama bin Laden led Al Qaeda. Our primary threat today is ISIS. And because Hillary Clinton failed to renegotiate the JV the team. forces agreement. 
uh, that would have allowed some American combat troops to remain in Iraq and secure the hard-fought gains the American soldier had won by 2009, ISIS was able to be literally conjured up out of the desert and it's overrun vast areas that the, the American soldier had won in Operation Iraqi Freedom. My heart breaks for the likes of Lance Corporal Scott Zubowski. He fell in Fallujah in 2005. He fought hard through some of the most difficult days in Operation Iraqi Freedom and he paid the ultimate sacrifice to defend our freedom and secure that nation. And that nation was secured in 2009, but because Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama <laughs> failed to provide a status of forces agreement and leave sufficient troops in there, we are back at war. The president just ordered more troops on the ground. We are back at war in Iraq. And, and, and Scott Zubowski, whose mom would always come to Memorial Day events in Newcastle, Indiana to see me, and I'd always give her a hug and tell her we're never gonna forget her son, and we never will. Scott Zabowski and the sacrifices the American soldier made were squandered in Iraq because this administration created a vacuum in which ISIS was able to grow. And a reference to the Iranian deal, the Iranian deal that Hillary Clinton initiated, $150 billion Stopping a to the radical mullahs program in Iran. Firing a shot? You didn't stop the nuclear weapons program. Yes, we program. did. You, you Even the Israeli you military says You essentially guaranteed that Iran will someday become a nuclear power because there's no limitations once the period of time of the treaty comes off. Governor Pence, Mr. Trump has proposed extreme vetting of immigrants from parts of the world that export terrorism. But that does not address many of the recent terrorist attacks in the United States states, such as the Orlando nightclub massacre and the recent bombings in New York and New Jersey. Those were homegrown. Hillary Clinton stood US down on the mosque that Omar Mateen what visited. Tools Hillary Clinton said it wasn't a bomb in New York. Well, I, I, think it's, I, I think it's a great question, Elaine. But it really does begin with us reforming our immigration system and putting the interest, particularly the safety and security of the American people first. I mean, Donald Trump has, has called for extreme vetting for people coming in to this country so that we, we don't bring people into the United States who are, who are hostile to our Bill of Rights freedoms, who are hostile to the American way of life. But also, uh, Donald Trump and I are committed to suspending the Syrian refugee program and, and programs and immigration from areas of the world that have been compromised by terrorism. Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine want to increase the Syrian refugee program by 500. Governor, Elaine, I want to tell you about, about our plan. Homegrown yeah. and, and so, but, but first, you know, let's, let's, let's make sure we're putting the safety and security of the American people first instead of Hillary Clinton expanding the Syrian refugee program. Or instead of program. you violating the Constitution but, by blocking people based on their national so origin rather than whether they're dangerous. That's not, that's Absolutely false. Oh, That's what the Lord. Seventh Circuit decided. Here's the difference. The Seventh Circuit, we, we have different views on, yeah. on refugee issues yeah. and on immigration. Hillary and I want to do enforcement based on are people dangerous. These guys say all Mexicans are bad. And with, respect to, and with respect to refugees, we want to keep people out if they're dangerous. Donald but Trump don't said know how keep to them out them. if they're Muslim. Mike Pence put Absolutely. a program in place to keep them out of their from Syria. That don't and agree with our ideology. With three Republican judges struck down right. the Pence plan right. and said it was discriminatory. And those judges, we should focus those judges upon said, danger. Yeah, discriminatory judges against said, dangerous people. Those judges said it was because that's what you're talking about. Yet. But you twist the words that uh, that that ISIS had infiltrated the United States. Well, Germany just arrested three Syrian refugees. Well, who I know were connected to ISIS, but they I mean, told you there's a right way and a wrong. The, way to do it. But look, if you're going to be critical of me on that, that's, that's fair game. I will tell you, after two Syrian refugees were involved in the attack in Paris that is called Paris's 9-11, as governor of the state of Indiana, I have no higher priority than the safety and security of the people of my state. But, but governor so you Pence, bet I suspended but, that program. But, but Governor Pence, and I, I stand just, by that decision, and if I'm vice president you, of the United States or Donald Trump is president, we're going to put the safety we, and security of the American sure. people Can first. we just be clear? Total Hillary madness. and I will do immigration enforcement and will vet refugees based on whether they're dangerous or not. Oh, we are, are they going to tell you that they're dangerous? The yeah, that's like vetting a police officer on whether he's racist or not. There's no test for that, you moron. <laughs> Elaine, the director of the FBI, our Homeland Security, said we can't know for certain who these people are coming from yes, Syria. Can. And no, yes, we can. Yes, we can. No, we How can you How? know that? The, the, What's your plan? We don't let them in. The FBI and Homeland Security said we can't know for certain. 
You've got to err on the side of the safety and security of the American people, Senator. Thank you. I understand By trashing all the Syrians UN or wants trashing us to all Muslims. Senator the Syrian King, let me ask you this. Secretary We're Clinton has talked about an intelligence Why does he do that? Why yes. does he what assume exactly that he just puts words in your mouth? It's like you make one statement and then it's all Mexicans, all Syrians. No, we're talking about radical Islamic terrorists, but you can't wrap your mind around that. You're a typical liberal. And illegal immigrants, not immigrants. expanding our intelligence capacities by hiring great professionals but also we've got some of the best intel and cyber uh, employees in the world right here in the United States working for many of our private sector companies. Yeah, that's why right. you keep getting hacked. That's why you hired them to run Hillary Clinton's private email server. ...with some of our cyber that was and hacked. intel experts in the private sector so that we can, consistent with constitutional principles, gather more intelligence. But the second piece of this is really, really important. Mm. It also means creating stronger <laughs> alliances because you gather intelligence and then you share your intelligence back and forth with allies. And that's how you find out who may be trying to recruit. Well, the Grinch trying who's trying to steal the vice presidential debate um, vomits out of his mouth. America. Can, can somebody find out what that flat, what that lapel is? And we need to get I, it's not the state Obama flag of Virginia. Can somebody find out what that lapel is? I have no idea. It's not an American flag. I know that. Put aside, push aside your alliances. Who are you going to share intelligence with? Hillary Clinton is the Secretary of State who knows how to build alliances. She built the sanctions regime around the world that stopped the Iranian nuclear weapons program. And that's what an intelligence means. Better skill and capacity, but also better alliances. All right. I'd like to turn now to the tragedy in Syria. Can I, can I speak about the cyber, cyber security surge at all? You can, you can uh, have 30 seconds, Governor, quickly. I, 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 well, I, first, uh, Donald Trump just spoke about this issue this week. We, we have got to bring together the best resources of this country to understand that, uh, that cyber warfare is the new warfare uh, of the asymmetrical enemies that we mm -hmm. face in this country. And, uh, uh, and I look forward, if I'm privileged to be in this role, of working with you in the Senate to make sure that we resource that effort. We will work we have together in whatever sir. roles we inhabit. We huh. have intelligence, sir. But I, I, I will, Look, I will also tell you that it's important in this moment to remember that Hillary Clinton had a private server in her home that had classified information right, on it about drone that. strikes. Emails from the President of the United States of America were on there. Right. Her private server was subject. Iranian scientists, I'd like to ask hours. you, then got beheaded. We could put, put cybersecurity first if we just make sure the next Secretary of State doesn't have A full investigation sir. concluded that not one reasonable prosecutor would take any additional step. You don't get to decide the, the rights and wrongs of this. We have a justice system that does that. And a Republican FBI director did an investigation and concluded... All right, we are moving on now. Senator, if your son or my people, son handled classified information the way Hillary children, Clinton did, they'd be court-martialed. That is absolutely false, and you know that. That is absolutely that. true, Tim Kaine. Because the FBI please. did the, did an investigation. Gentlemen. And they concluded that there was Senator, no reasonable oh, prosecutor who would take it. Oh, my Senator God. Senator Kane, Governor Pence, please. Syria. I want to turn please, now to Syria. Please. 250,000 people, 100,000 of them children, are under siege in Aleppo, Syria. Bunker buster bombs, cluster munitions, and incendiary weapons are being dropped on them by Russian and Syrian militaries. Does the U.S. And have moderate a responsibility rebels to protect civilians Hillary Clinton and prevent mass casualties on this scale? Governor Pence. The United States of America needs to begin to exercise strong leadership to protect the vulnerable citizens and over 100,000 children in Aleppo. Hillary Clinton's top priority when she became Secretary of State was the Russian reset. The Russian reset. After the Russian reset, the Russians invaded Ukraine and took over Crimea. And the small and bullying leader uh, of Russia is now dictating terms to the United States to the point where all the, all the United States of America, uh, 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 the, 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 the greatest nation on earth, just withdraws from talks about a, a ceasefire while Vladimir Putin puts a missile defense system in Syria while he marshals the forces and begins. Look, we, we have got to begin to lean into this with strong, broad-shouldered American leadership. It begins by rebuilding our military. I mean, the Russians and the Chinese have been making enormous investments in the military. We, we, have, we have the smallest Navy since 1916. We have the lowest number of, of troops since the end of the Second World War. We've got to work with the Congress and Donald Trump will to rebuild our military and project American strength in the world. But about Aleppo and about Syria, I, I truly do believe that, that 
that what America ought to do right now is to immediately establish safe zones so that families and, and vulnerable uh, families with children can move out of those areas, work with our Arab partners real time right now to make that happen. And secondly, I, I just have to tell you that the provocations by Russia need to be met with American strength. Uh, and, and if Russia chooses to be involved and continue, I should say, to be involved, and this barbaric attack on civilians in Aleppo, the United States of America should be prepared to use military force to strike military targets of the Assad regime, to prevent them from this humanitarian uh, crisis that is taking place in Aleppo. Mm. Uh, th there's a broad range of other things that we ought to do as well. We ought to, we ought to deploy a missile defense shield to the Czech Republic and Poland which Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama pulled back on out of not wanting to offend the Russians Governor, back in 2009. Me, We've just got to have American strength on the world stage. And when Donald Trump becomes president of the United States, the Russians and other countries in the world will, will know they're dealing with a strong American president. Senator Hillary and I also agree that the establishment of a humanitarian zone in northern Syria with the provision of international human aid consistent with UN Security Council resolution that was passed in February 2014 would be a very, very good idea. And Hillary also has the ability to stand up to Russia in a way that this ticket does not. Donald Trump again and again has praised Vladimir Putin and it's clear that he has business dealings with Russian oligarchs who are very connected to Putin. The Trump campaign management team had to be fired a month or so ago because of those shadowy connections with pro-Putin forces. Governor Penn Made the oh, you odd mean like claim. selling uh, he said, in uranium to Russia, Vladimir Putin the Clinton is a Foundation, than President Obama? Vladimir Putin's run his economy into the ground. He persecutes LGBT so folks is Obama. and journalists. If you don't know the difference between dictatorship and leadership, you're going you to find go out if you vote Clinton King. Class. <laughs> I tell you what offends me. Governor, oh, Pence just, me. Governor Pence just said, Governor Pence just said that Donald Trump will rebuild the military. No, he won't. Donald Trump is avoiding paying taxes. The New York Times story, and we need to get this, but the New York Times story suggested that he probably didn't pay taxes. Suggested for about that he years probably. In 1995. Those years included the years of 9-11. So get this. On 9-11, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump's hometown was attacked by the worst terrorist attack in the history of the United States. Young men and women, young men and women signed up to serve in the military to fight terrorism. Hillary Clinton went to Washington to get funds to rebuild her city and protect first responders. But Donald Trump was fighting a very different fight. It was a fight to avoid paying taxes so that he wouldn't support the fight against terror. He wouldn't support up, troops. Senator. He wouldn't, he wouldn't support. Yeah, stick to the this script. This is important, Elaine. When a guy running for president <laughs> Will not support the troops. Not support. All right, Mike. It's time to bring up the Clinton teachers. Foundation, That's Pence. Really it's time to bring up the Clinton Foundation. It's trying to bring up Haiti. It's time to bring up the fact that Hillary Clinton used that same tax loophole in 2015 to avoid paying more than $700,000 in taxes. They all do it. They all have the best accountants that they can possibly buy in order to not pay the taxes that they don't want to pay. If they can get away with not paying it, they will. Do you not take We're not the taxes? This is How does that work? about Syria. No, I, I, I'd like to ask the but question. But it's about our honestly, troops. Senator, honestly, it Senator, is about this, our troops. I understand why How you want to change it. I understand why you want to change the subject. I understand, <sighs> I understand why you want to change the subject. And, and let me be very clear on this Russian thing. The larger question here. Do you think Donald Trump is smart to not pay taxes? We're going to have time to get to Russia here. What we're dealing with is is the you know there's an old proverb that says the russian bear never dies it just hibernates and the truth of the matter is the weak and feckless foreign policy of hillary clinton and barack obama has awakened an aggression in russia that first a a appeared a few years ago with their move in georgia now their move into crimea now their move into the wider middle east and and all the while all we do is is fold our arms and say we're not having talks anymore to, to answer your question, we just need American strength. We, we, need to, we need to marshal the resources of our allies in the region and in the immediate. We need to act and act now to get people out of harm's way. And exactly how would those safe zones work? How would they remain safe? The, the safe zones would have to be, um, as, as the senator said, uh, there's already a framework for this that's been recognized by the international community. But the United States of America needs to be prepared to work with our allies in the region to create uh, a route for safe uh, passage and then to protect people in those areas, including with a no-fly zone. 
But look, this, this is very tough stuff. I served on the Foreign Affairs Committee for a decade. I traveled in and out of that region for 10 years. I saw what the American soldier won in Operation Iraqi Freedom. And to see the weak and feckless leadership that, that Hillary Clinton was the architect of in the foreign policy of the Obama well, administration let, let me, let me come back is, and is talk deeply about, troubling to me. That will let, all let me change talk about the day the Donald Trump Governor becomes Pence president doesn't of the United States. Elaine. He doesn't want to acknowledge that we stopped the Iranian nuclear weapons program. He doesn't want he to didn't. acknowledge that Hillary was part of the right lie. It's like everyone is so worried about this Iran deal because it's going to help speed up their plans for nuclear weapons. Good job. Well, let me tell you what will really make the Middle East dangerous. Donald Trump's idea that more nations should get nuclear weapons. Saudi Arabia, Japan, South Korea. Ronald Reagan said something really interesting about nuclear proliferation back in the 1980s. He said the problem with nuclear proliferation is that some fool or maniac could trigger a catastrophic event. And I think that's who Governor Pence's running mate is, exactly who oh, President on. Reagan warned us about. Senator. Senator, that was even beneath you and Hillary Clinton, and that, that's pretty low. <laughs> but do you, do, you think, uh, do you think we should have more nuclear, more nuclear weapons in the world will make us safer? Hillary Clinton has sold Senator billions of dollars Reagan, in Reagan, arms Reagan, to some of the most dangerous Reagan, countries Reagan, in the region. Yeah, sure, maybe it's not an actual nuclear United weapon, States but America, they are going outside of their borders, bringing the war to us now. Donald I can't believe Trump's he just called Donald Trump our a crazed well, criminal when that's... I mean, that's his partner. That's Hillary Clinton. She's, she is a psychopath. And this guy's up here trying to say that's Trump. That's a vast right wing conspiracy. That's, that's what the Israeli head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is saying right well, now. Well, that's, that's, that's not what Israel thinks. Gotti, you, you, Gotti Eisencote, you can go yeah, check it. You wouldn't go necessarily know that. I know you boycotted Prime Minister Netanyahu's speech. No, I visited him in his Congress. office. I visited him in you his office. You boycotted the speech. The, the point is, what, what this Iran, so-called Iran deal did, did, was essentially guaranteed. I mean, when I was in Congress, I fought hard on a bipartisan basis with Republican and Democrat members to move forward the toughest sanctions, it literally in the history of the United States. Against and then Hillary Red. used them. We were the bringing deal. them to heel, but the goal was always that we would only lift the sanctions if Iran permanently renounced their nuclear Elaine, ambitions. Elaine, let me just mention one They have thing. not, <laughs> Elaine, let me finish the sentence. Mm -hmm. They have not renounced their nuclear ambitions. And when the deals period runs out, there's right. no limitation on them obtaining weapons. That Elaine, and the fact that they got $1.7 billion in a ransom payment need to talk about Russia very is just astonishing to the American Pence. people. Six times tonight, I have said to Governor Pence, I can't imagine how you can defend your running mate's position on one issue after the next. And in all six cases, he's refused to defend well, his running mate's position. No, no, don't put words okay. in my mouth. All right. But, but no, he, and yet, he's going to do yet, that, you've got to give And yet, he is asking everybody to vote for somebody that he cannot defend. And I just think that should oh, be underlined. All right, gentlemen, let's talk about Russia. This is a topic that is I'm very, very happy to defend Donald Trump. I will give you an opportunity to, to do time, that. I'll take them one at a time. More, More nations put, should get nuclear weapons. Don't put try to defend that. Mouth. Well, he never said that, All right. Senator. And he is know absolutely it. decided. Gentlemen, Saudi Arabia, South said, Korea, Japan. Said. Gentlemen, Russia. Russian President Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine, annexed Crimea, and has provided crucial military support to the Assad regime. What steps, if any, would your administration take to counter these actions, Senator Kane? You've got to be tough on Russia. So let's start with not praising Vladimir Putin as a great leader. Donald Trump and Mike Pence have said he's a great leader. And Donald Trump has, no, bus we have has, business, dealings, has business dealings with Russia that he refuses to disclose. Hillary Clinton has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Russia. She went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Russia as Secretary of State to do the New START agreement to reduce Russia's nuclear stockpile. She's had the experience doing it. She went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Russia and lodged protests when they went into Georgia. And we've done the same thing about Ukraine, but more than lodging protests, we've put punishing economic sanctions on Russia that we need to continue. Donald Trump, on the other hand, didn't know that Russia had invaded the Crimea. Oh, that's nonsense. He, he, he was on a TV show a couple months he back and he said, Crimea. I'll guarantee you this, Russia's not going into the Ukraine. And he had to be reminded that they had gone into the Crimea two years before. He Hillary, 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 Hillary Clinton has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Russia. 
to work out a deal on New Start. She got them engaged in a meaningful way to cap Iran's nuclear weapons program. And yet she stood up to them on issues such as Syria and their invasion of Georgia. You've got to have the ability to do that. And Hillary does. And Joe Biden sent his son hand, in to go oversee the oil. Praises Vladimir Putin <laughs> Isn't that the convenient? There, America should really wonder about, about a President Trump who had a campaign manager with ties to Putin, pro-Putin elements in the Ukraine, who had to be fired for that reason. They should wonder when Donald Trump is sitting down with Vladimir Putin, is it going to be America's bottom line? Or is it going to be Donald Trump's bottom line that he's going to be worried about with all of his business dealings? Now, this could be solved if Donald Trump would be willing to release his tax returns, as he told the American public. <laughs> Why doesn't Hillary do Clinton release her speeches this, to um, all the banks and Wall Street and Goldman Sachs? We know what her bottom line is. It's not going to be the American people. Business with Russia. The only way the American public will see whether he has no, a conflict he of interest. Said that. He, Senator, he uh, has, your time actually. is up. Governor. Well. Thanks. I just, <laughs> just trying to keep up with the insult-driven campaign on the other side of the I'm, table. I, you know, I'm just saying facts about your running mate. Yeah, well, and I know you can't Senator, defend him. Senator, please. I, I'm is happy to defend him, Senator. Don't put words in my mouth that I'm not defending him. You're not. I'm happy to defend him. Most of what you said is completely false, and the American people know that. This I'll is, run through this the list of this things where you can defend Senator, please. Sexist, racist, xenophobic. This is the this is the alternative universe of Washington D.C. versus is reality. Hillary Clinton said her number one priority was a reset with Russia. That reset resulted in the invasion of Ukraine. After they'd infiltrated with what are called little green men, Russian soldiers that were dressing up like Ukrainian dissidents, and then they moved all the way into Crimea, took over the Crimean Peninsula. And Donald Trump knew that happened. He basically was saying it's not going to happen again. The truth of the matter is that that what you have in, in the, the rise of aggressive Russia, which has had increased its influence in Iran, that's now, that now because of this deal is on a pathway in the future to obtain a nuclear, the leading state sponsor of terror in the world in Iran now has a closer working relationship with Russia because of Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama's foreign policy and $150 billion and sanctions all being lifted. And then of course Syria, I mean it's, it really is extraordinary. This, Syria is imploding. You just asked a very thoughtful question about the disaster in Aleppo. ISIS is headquartered in Raqqa. It is, ISIS from Raqqa has overrun vast areas that at great sacrifice the American soldier won in Operation Iraqi Freedom. And yet, Senator Kane still sits here, loyal soldier, I get all that, and it, it, saying that, that, that the foreign policy of Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama somehow made the world more secure. Right. It really is astonishing We've that on the, day, the leader of on the day that Iran released we, four American we hostages, oh, ISIS weapons. we Governor. delivered 400 million in and cash you ISIS on to to, as a ransom go from payment the JV team for Americans to our number held one threat. by the radical mullahs in Tehran. And Governor, we just today, Mr. Trump said, quote, shot. Putin has no respect for Hillary Clinton and no respect for Obama. Why do you think he'll respect a Trump-Pence administration? Strength. Plain and simple. Business. Donald Trump, that's nonsense. Donald Trump, Do is Donald a strong Trump's son leader says who is that the going Trump organization to lead with America's we strength. We're, gonna, we're going to rebuild our military. And let me, let me say this whole Putin thing. Look, America is stronger than Russia. Our economy is 16 times larger than the Russian economy. America's political system is superior to the crony, corrupt capitalist system in Russia in every way. Uh, when, when Donald Trump and I observe that, as I've said, in Syria, in Iran, in Ukraine, that, that the small and bullying leader of Russia has been stronger on the world stage than this administration, that's, that's stating painful facts. That's not an endorsement of Vladimir Putin. That's an indictment of the weak and feckless leadership Senator of Clinton. Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. Well, this is one where you can just kind of go to the tape on it. But Governor Pence said, inarguably, Vladimir Putin is a better leader than President Trump. That is absolutely in our... And, and I would accurate. agree with that. And, yeah, I mean, I just think he, I they won't even right roll stronger, the, he's been stronger the gate out for him when he gets off his plane. Seven. They don't and, respect and if, him if, around the globe. And, and I'll just say this, Governor. If you, you just said better. If you mistake leadership for dictatorship and you can't tell the difference, 
a country that's running its economy. Yeah, here we go. This is the great school thing journalists. again. Right. This if, is great. If you can't tell the difference, you shouldn't be commander in chief. Yeah. And with Donald, Donald Trump's sons say that they have all these business dealings with Russia. Those could be disclosed with tax returns, but they refuse I'm to I'm not sure them. that Tim Kaine understands America the difference standing up for Barack Obama, for who has been the closest thing to a dictator this country's ever seen. I have pen, I have paper. Quoting Obama. Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin is a dictator. And what Vladimir, would you do differently? Vladimir Putin is a dictator. He's not a leader. Well, that's what I want to destroy Maybe the Constitution so Clinton can be Russian the dictator here. Vladimir Putin. Hillary Clinton knows exactly who this guy is. John we know exactly who Hillary Clinton is. Yeah, and like we trust her opinion on. Does she, does she know who her own husband is? We do have to deal with Russia. Not a good character-driven person there. So it was Hillary Clinton who worked with Russia on the New START treaty to reduce their nuclear weapons stockpile. It was Hillary Clinton that worked with Russia to get them engaged in a community of nations. It was Hillary Clinton Iranian that sold the U.S. uranium to the Russians. She's not going around praising Vladimir Putin as a great guy, but she knows how to sit down at a table and negotiate tough deals. Oh, yeah. This is a very Super tough challenging part of the world, Are you and radiant? we ought to have a commander-in-chief who has prepared and done it, rather than somebody who goes around praising Vladimir Putin as a great leader. All right, I'd like to ask now about North Korea, Iran, and the threat of nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. North Korea recently conducted its fifth and most powerful nuclear test. Right. What specific steps would you take to prevent North Korea from developing a nuclear-armed missile capable of reaching the United States? Governor Pence. Well, first, we, we, need to, we need to make a commitment to rebuild our military, including modernizing our nuclear forces. And, and we, also need, we also need an effective American diplomacy that will marshal uh, the resources of nations in the Asian Pacific Rim to put pressure on North Korea, on Kim Jong-un, to abandon his nuclear ambitions. It has to remain the policy of the United States of America, the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Plain and simple. And when Donald Trump is president of the United States, we're, we're, we're not going to have the, uh, the kind of, of posture in the world that has Russia invading uh, Crimea and Ukraine, that has the Chinese building new islands in the South China Sea, that has literally the world, including North Korea, flouting American power. We're, we're, going, to, we're going to go back to the days of peace through strength. But I have to, I have to tell you that, that, that all this talk about tax returns, and I get it, you know, you want to keep bringing that up, it must have, must have and well as some promise. focus group. Uh, but here, <laughs> Hillary Clinton and her husband set up a private foundation called the Clinton Foundation. While she was Secretary of State, the Clinton Foundation accepted tens of millions of dollars from foreign governments and foreign donors. Now, now y'all need to know out there, this is, this is basic stuff. Foreign donors and certainly foreign governments cannot participate in the American political process. They cannot make financial contributions. But the Clintons figured out a way to create a foundation where foreign governments and foreign donors could donate millions of dollars. And then we found, thanks to the good work of the Associated Press, that more than half of her private meetings when she was Secretary of State were given to major donors of the Clinton Foundation. When you talk about the, all these all these baseless rumors about Russia and the rest, Hillary Clinton, what, the, you asked the trustworthy question at the very beginning. The reason Governor, the American people don't trust up. Hillary Clinton is because they are looking at the pay-to-play politics that she operated with the Clinton Foundation through a Governor, private please. server while she's Your Secretary of State. Up, and they're saying enough is enough. Senator Kane. I'm going to talk about the foundation, then I'll talk about North Korea. So, on the foundation. I am glad to talk about the foundation. The Clinton Foundation is one of the highest rated charities in the world. It provides That's less than 5% of those foreign donations go to it helping helps people. Americans the rest of them go to line the pockets of the Clintons. It gets higher rankings for its charity than the American Red Cross does. It was actually taken the off the off charity, it was like a charity Clinton watch list, watchdogs. They took no them off. Action to benefit the foundation. The State Department did an investigation. And they concluded that Oh, the Hillary Clinton Hillary State Department did an investigation on the Hillary Clinton Foundation. <laughs> wow. You didn't find anything? So the foundation Shocking. Good work, Shocking. And Hillary Clinton, as Secretary of State, acted in the interest of the United States. Uh -huh. But let's compare this now with the Trump right. Organization and the Trump Foundation. The Trump Organization is an octopus-like organization with tentacles all over the world whose...
conflict of interest could only be known if Donald Trump would release his tax returns. He's refused to And do. let's not forget the his Clinton Foundation, when they released their tax returns, uh, they had to redo to up to three years of them the because they failed to disclose the donations they were getting from foreign countries. The they were messed up and they were the putting, the, putting the money in the, the allocating it to the wrong um, channels and lying about Bill Clinton taking in money from speeches and the foundation was just wouldn't and wouldn't the Donald Trump Foundation have a different filing process than Donald Trump himself? So this doesn't make any sense. And it also, you know, as we've learned from the the Clinton Foundation, the donations don't equal pay to play favors. It doesn't mean there's any wrongdoing there. So I don't know why he's even bringing this up. This is the difference between a foundation that does good work mm -hmm. and a secretary of state who acted in accord with American interests. Bring up and Haiti. Somebody Bring who up is Haiti. Conflicted in doing work around the world and won't share with the American public what he's doing and what those conflicts are. Governor, I will give you 30 seconds to respond because I know you want to. But again, I would remind you both this was about North Korea. Well, thank, you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. The Trump Foundation is a private family foundation. They give virtually every cent in the Trump Foundation to charitable causes. Political uh, Less than 10 cents on the dollar in the Clinton Foundation has gone to charitable causes. $20,000 portrait Less of Donald Trump. Less than 10 cents on the dollar the Clinton Foundation has gone to charitable exactly. causes. Exactly, and that's 90. a fact. It has been a platform for, uh, for the Clintons to travel the world, for, to, uh, to have staff. But, we, but honestly, Senator, we would know a lot more about it if Hillary Clinton would just turn over the oh. 33,000 emails All right, let's that turn she refused yep. to turn, turn now, over. Senator Kane. He's like, yes, yes, North Korea, North Korea. Moving on. Senator Kane, if you had intelligence that North Korea was about to launch a missile, a nuclear-armed missile, capable of reaching the United States, would you take preemptive action? I have exclusive, if, if we uh, have looked, I've got the documents of what take Tim Kaine has been scribbling furiously this States entire time. Right. You have to. President you doc has cam. to do that. We've now, got exactly the documents. What action? You would have to determine what your intelligence was, how certain you were of that intelligence, but, but you would have to take action. You asked the question about how do we deal with the North Korea. I'm on the Foreign Relations Committee. We just did a, an extensive sanctions package, package against North Korea. And interestingly enough, Elaine, the UN followed and did this virtually the same package. Often China will use their uh, veto in the Security Council to veto a package like that. They're starting to get worried about North Korea, too. Yeah. So they actually supported the sanctions package, even though many of the sanctions are against Chinese uh, Chinese firms, Chinese financial institutions. So we're working together with China, and we need to. China is another one of those relationships where it's competitive, it's also challenging, and in times like North Korea, we have to be able to cooperate. Hillary understands that very well. She went once famously to China and stood up at a human rights meeting and looked him in the eye and said, women's rights are human rights. They didn't want her to say that, but she did. But she's also worked on a lot of Did she say that in Saudi Arabia? And, and uh, important diplomatic deals with China, and that's what it's going to take. The, the thing I would worry a little bit about is that Donald Trump uh, owes about $650 million to banks, including the Bank of China. I'm not sure he could stand up so tough to the people who have loaned him money. All right. I'd like to uh, ex to yeah, exactly. Now. Just like the banks, uh, Goldman Sachs, Sachs and everyone who has given Hillary Clinton interest. money. Let's not forget in her tax returns from last year, she donated a million dollars to charity so she wouldn't have to pay as much in taxes to her own charity. And a public policy position. Senator King. Yeah, that's an easy one for me, Elaine. It, it's an easy one. I, I'm really fortunate. I grew up in a wonderful household with great Irish Catholic parents. My mom and dad are sitting right here. I was educated by Jesuits at Rockhurst High School in Kansas City, my 40th reunions in 10 days. And I worked with Jesuit Aww, missionaries he's just a in lovable Honduras guy. now nearly 35 years ago, and they were the heroes of my life. I, I, I try to practice my religion in a very devout way and follow the teachings of my church in my own personal life. But I don't believe in this nation, a First Amendment nation, where we don't raise any religion over the other, and we allow people to worship as they please that the doctrines of any one religion should be mandated for everyone. For me, the hardest struggle um, in, in my faith life was um, the Catholic Church is against the death penalty, and so am I. But I was governor of a state, and the state <laughs> law said that there was yeah, a death penalty. Yeah, we only believe in the death penalty if you shoot the guy so who to, leaked our secret documents to WikiLeaks. Governor, yeah. Then we like the death penalty. <laughs> but I looked the voters of Virginia in the eye and said, look, 
this is my religion. I'm not going to change my religious practice to get one vote. But I know how to take an oath and uphold the law. And if you elect me, I will uphold the law. And uh, I was elected, and I did. It was very, very difficult to allow executions to go forward. But in circumstances where I didn't feel like there was a case for clemency, I told Virginia voters I would uphold the law, and I did. That was a real struggle. But I think it is really, really important that those of us who have deep faith lives don't feel like we could just mm. substitute our own views for everybody else in society, regardless of their views. Tim Kaine honors his religion when it does not intersect well, it's, it's with liberal, question. secular and, ideology. Uh, Abortion. Uh, my Christian faith is at the very heart of who I am. I was, I was also raised in a, in a wonderful family of, of faith. It was a church on Sunday morning and grace before dinner. But my Christian faith became real for me when I made a personal decision for Christ when I was a freshman in college. And I've, I've tried to live that out, however imperfectly, every day of my life since. And uh, with my wife at my side, we've, we've followed a calling into public service where we've, we've, tried, to, we've tried to keep faith uh, with the values uh, that, that we cherish. Um, and w with regard to, to when I struggle, I, 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 I appreciate and, 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 and I, I have a great deal of respect for Senator Kane's sincere faith. I truly do. That's shared. But for me, I, I, I would tell you that for That's me, shared. the sanctity of life um, proceeds out of the belief that You're that ready. ancient principle that um, where, where God says, before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. And so for my first time in public life, I've sought to stand with great compassion for the sanctity of life. Uh, the state of Indiana has also sought to make sure that we expand uh, alternatives in health care counseling for women, non-abortion alternatives. We, I'm also very pleased the fact we're well on our way in Indiana to becoming the most pro-adoption state in America. I think if you're going to be pro-life, you should, you should be pro-adoption. But what, what I can't understand is with Hillary Clinton and now Senator Kane at her side is to support a practice like partial birth abortion. I mean, to hold to the view, and I know Senator Kane, you, you hold pro-life views personally, but, but the very idea that a child that is almost born into the world could still have their life taken from them is just anathema to me. And I, and I, cannot, I can't conscience about, about a party that supports that. Or that I know you've historically opposed taxpayer funding of abortion, but Hillary Clinton wants to, wants to repeal the long-standing provision in the law where we said we wouldn't use taxpayer dollars to fund abortion. So for me, my faith informs my life. I try and spend a little time on my knees every day, but, but it all for me begins with cherishing the dignity, the worth, the value of every human life. Elaine, this is a fundamental question, a fundamental question. I think uh, one of our callers was right. They were going to let this be one of the last closing was really questions because this is really going to set them apart. And, of but course, really heavily divide like the country. And it is the first time we've seen this happen, enthusiasm that at least in this cycle. Faith. But it is not the role of the public servant to mandate that for everybody else. So let's talk about abortion and choice. Let's talk about that. We support Roe versus Wade. We support the constitutional right of American women to consult their own conscience, their own supportive partner, their own minister, but then make their own decision about pregnancy. That's something we trust American women to do that. And we don't think that women should be punished, as Donald Trump said they should, for making the decision to have an abortion. Governor Pence wants to repeal Roe versus Wade. He said he wants to put it on the ash heap of history. And we have some young people in the audience who weren't even born when Roe was decided. This is pretty important. Before Roe v. Wade, states could pass criminal laws to do just that, to punish women if they made the choice to terminate a pregnancy. I think you should live your moral values. But the last thing, the very last thing the government should do is have laws that would punish women who make reproductive choices. And that is the fundamental difference between a Clinton-Cain ticket 
and a Trump Pence ticket that wants to punish women who make no, that it's, choice. It's, it's really no, they not, want to punish uh, people Trump. that break the Donald law. Never Big difference that the Democrats don't seem to understand. Women who made the heartbreaking choice to end a pregnancy. And why did Donald Trump say that? We just that? never would. Why did he say that? Well, because he said he wanted to make it illegal. A polished politician. Like That's why. If you break the law, you get punished. Well, I would admit, Very simple. Exactly the way he means well, but can I'm I tell you what other great, policy great line, from the, great would be. line from the gospel of but what, but from what, the fullness of the heart the mouth speaks yeah when donald trump says women should be punished or mexicans are rapists and criminals I'm telling or john mccain's not a hero <laughs> he is showing you who he is senator you 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 whipped out that mexican thing again and you are showing he, look can you defend it? There are criminal aliens in this country, Tim, who have come into this country illegally, who are perpetrating violence and, wanna, and taking lives. You want to use a big lives. tar brush against Mexico? He also oh, no. said, and many of them are good people. You keep leaving that out of your quote. And if you want me to go there, I'll go there. But here's, there is a choice here, and it's a, it, is, it is a choice on life. I couldn't be more proud to be standing with Donald Trump, who's standing for the right to life. It, it's a principle that Senator Kane, and I'm very gentle about this because I really do respect you. It's a principle that you embrace. And, and I've appreciated the fact that you've supported uh, the Hyde Amendment, which bans the use of taxpayer funding for abortion in the past. But that's not Hillary Clinton's view. People need to understand we can come together as a nation. We can create a culture of life. More and more young people today are embracing life because we, we, we know we are... A, we're, we're better for it. We can, like Mother Teresa said at that famous but, national prayer breakfast. This is important. Bring the, I, let's I, welcome the children into our world. There are so many families let, let, around the country who can't have children. If we could improve the option so that families that can't have children can adopt more Governor, readily why those children. Why don't you trust women to make pregnancies. this choice for themselves? We can encourage people to support life. Of course we can. But why don't you trust women? Why doesn't Donald Trump trust women to make this choice for themselves? That's what we ought to be doing in public life, living our lives of faith or motivation. Yeah, because Tim, Tim Kaine and Hillary Clinton trust that American women will kill their babies. They trust it, and it's happened year after year. So that's what they trust, folks. Because there is, there, a society can be judged by how it deals with its most vulnerable, the agent, the infirm, the disabled, and the unborn. I believe it with all my heart, and I, I couldn't be more proud to be standing with a pro-life candidate in Donald Trump. I do have one final question for you both tonight. It has been a divisive campaign. Senator Kane, if your ticket wins, what specifically are you going to do to unify the country and reassure the people who voted against you? That's a really important one. That may be the $64,000 question, because it has been a divisive campaign. And again, Hillary's running a campaign about stronger together. And Donald Trump, and this is, this is not directed at, at this man, except to the extent that he can't defend Donald Trump. Donald Trump has run a campaign that's been about one insult after the next. But we, we do have to bring the country As he together. insults Donald Trump, I so can't stand this guy. We'll I know, I really Hillary can't stand Clinton him. Was first slain, You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Years in Secretary of State, and I serve in the Senate. And I'm really amazed, Elaine, as I talk to Republican senators, how well they regard and respect Hillary Clinton. She was on the Armed Services Committee. She was on other committees. She worked across the aisle when she was first lady to get the CHIP program passed so that 8 million low-income kids have health insurance in this country, including 150,000 in Indiana. She worked across the aisle after 9-11 to get health benefits for the first responders who bravely went into the towers and into the Pentagon. She worked to get benefits for, TRICARE benefits for National Guard members, including Hoosiers and Virginians in the National Guard. She has a track record of working across the aisle to make things happen. And you know, Elaine, I have the same track record. I was a, a governor of Virginia with two Republican houses. And in the Senate, I have good working relationships across the aisle. Because yeah, I think it's fine to be a Democrat or Republican or independent, but after election day, the goal is work together. And Hillary Clinton has a track record of accomplishment across the aisle that will enable her to do just that when we work with the new Congress in January. Governor, how will you unify the country if you win? Well, thank you, Elaine, and thank, thanks for a great discussion. Absolutely. Tonight. Thank you, Senator. This is a very challenging time in the life of our nation weakened America's place in the world after the leadership of Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama on the world stage has been followed 
by an economy that is truly struggling, stifled by an avalanche of more taxes, more regulation, Obamacare, the war on coal, and the kind of trade deals that have put American workers in the back seat. And I think the best way that we can bring people together is through change in Washington, D.C. You know, I served in Washington, D.C. for 12 years in the Congress of the United States. And I served with many Republicans and Democrats, men and women of goodwill. The potential is there to really change the direction of this country, but it's going to take leadership to do it. The American people want to see our nation standing tall on the world stage again. They want to see us supporting our military, rebuilding our military, commanding the respect of the world, and they want to see the American economy off to the races again. They want to see an American comeback. And Donald Trump's entire career has been about building. It's been about it's going through hardship just like a business person does and finding a way through, through smarts and ingenuity and resilience to, to fight forward. And, and when Donald Trump becomes president of the United States, we're going to have a stronger America. When you hear him say he wants to make America great again, when we do that, I truly do believe the American people are going to be standing taller. Mm -hmm. They're going to see that real change can happen after decades of just talking about it. And when that happens, the American people are going to stand tall, stand together, and we'll have the kind of unity that's been missing for way too long. All right, gentlemen, mm -hmm. thank you so much. And that's the this whole thing with the, the getting a your fired okay. candidate. The they tried to the kind of paint that as a bad thing that Donald Trump would be a your fired candidate, and he just kind of spelled it out like, yeah, he's going to fire all of the people in government who are wasting our tax dollars. I am all for that. Get him out. Yeah. Get him out. Well, you were asking at the beginning of this, you know, how do you, how does one win a debate? Well, I think Pence just answered that question. I think he dominated that. And clearly, uh, Kane, on the other hand, just showed the true colors of the Democrats, which is like, we're not going to focus on the issues. We just want to get people all fired up about these weaponized terminology of racist, sexist. He used the exact words verbatim that Hillary Clinton said in the past. And they rely on low information voters. Right. They rely on the ignorance of their voters. This has been proven. They've even said this uh, in leaks. We've seen this. So we know that this is going on. Uh, we'll take a quick break, though, and uh, we will take your okay. calls on the other side. So uh, here's the we'll, number. We are going to yeah, be taking your calls. 877 789 and we're also going to go ahead and, and play this Jones piece because he really wants to hammer this home, how key it is that we need to expose the Clintons, what they did not do in Haiti, how they didn't use all the billions of dollars in donations to help the Haitians. What did they do with all that money? Those people are still suffering. God bless them. They're going to be suffering even further now with this hurricane. But stick around. We will be right back taking your phone calls right after this. Devastated in 2010 by one of the worst earthquakes in Caribbean history. It took only a glance to see what the rains did to the largest camp in Port-au-Prince. Estimates vary, but up to 200,000 people have lost their lives. New details of a possible influence paddling in the aftermath of the 2010 earthquake in Haiti, which we all remember very well. There were hundreds of homes who were destroyed after the earthquake, and the people are still hungry. They have no food, no job, no homes. This is not right. The Clintons... Hillary Clinton should be behind bars. Now Hurricane Matthew has slammed into Haiti at over 145 miles an hour, creating unbelievable devastation. The whole world has given billions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation for the Haitians. Not only, not even 2% of that money went back to Haiti. Haitian leaders have already taken note of the fact that Donald Trump has been exposing the Clinton crimes in their nation. So, Mr. Trump, we are asking you, begging you, the Haitian community will side with you if one day you ask Hillary Clinton publicly to disclose the audit of all the money they have stolen from Haiti in 2010 after the earthquake. They're calling for you, Donald J. Trump. They're begging you to come to their island nation. We need somebody like Donald Trump in the White House to make America great. So other countries around the world will respect America again. 
Mr. Trump, you've been on the cutting edge of exposing the Clinton Foundation and how they robbed Haiti. Out of all their crimes, Haiti is clearly the worst. Tens of millions of dollars raised and less than 10% actually delivered to the starving people of Haiti. More than 10,000 Haitian children then died because the United Nations effort led by the Clintons gave them poison fetid water. Even the State Department's own data dump has letters from Chelsea Clinton, the Clintons' daughter, saying, please, you've got to do a better job. Children are dying from cholera. We've seen something in Hillary Clinton beyond hubris. We've seen an almost mechanical disconnect. A little over a month ago, when she refused to go to flooded Louisiana and Mississippi, Donald Trump went there and was on the spot and delivered food and aid to the people and talked to local leaders. As I speak, Haiti faces an even bigger threat than the devastating 2010 earthquake. Hurricane Matthew at over 145 miles an hour has smashed into the island and is sitting over it, wreaking mass flooding landslides and huge amounts of death. The Clintons publicly led an international movement that in total stole close to $2 billion of aid money that was meant to go to Haiti. And now six years later, they've almost rebuilt nothing. And Hurricane Matthew shows the horrific cost of what the Clinton Foundation has done, parasitically bleeding this Caribbean island. In 2010, the president of the Haitian Senate, Bernard Sansarik, was there when the Clintons reportedly tried to bribe him to cover up the fact that they were stealing billions of dollars in donations. In the words of the former Haitian Senate president, the Clintons exploited Haiti's earthquake to steal billions of dollars from the sick and starving. The American embassy called me, as it was often the case, and they said, President Clinton has a messenger for you. I said, send him over. He came, did not give me his name, but told me, Mr. Sensory, you join our movement. You side with Bill Clinton in this invasion and will make you the richest man in Haiti. I said, sir, tell President Clinton for me, Bernard Sensory is not for sale. I have principle and I love my country. A week later, by executive order, Clinton revoked my visa. I was then a resident of the United States. I am now a citizen of the United States. And you know, when she raises this money, every time she raises money, she's making deals. They're saying, could I be the ambassador to this? Could I do that? Make sure my business is taken care of. I mean, give me a break. All of the money she's raising, that's blood money. I'll be honest with viewers, Donald Trump has always been one step ahead of me and my listeners. That's why he needs to be our president. But I'm just here to give the moral support to make sure that Donald does what he knows is best and some of his advisors don't block this idea because it's the right thing to do to help Haiti. The Clintons have already robbed them of billions of dollars of donations and it shows that America really does care and it shows how presidential Donald Trump is to fly in, not days after the hurricane, but right behind it as it blows out tomorrow. Come in, land. Give them a donation. Give them food. Rally good aid organizations that have good ratings online for giving almost all the donations to the Haitians and support a true rebuilding in that country. And announce that your organization, the Trump Organization, is going to investigate building a hotel or tourist attraction in the nation. Show people what you've done in the business world. Show people true business investment in Haiti and a true helping hand in the midst of their crisis. Then Hillary will counter saying you should be in the U.S., not in Haiti. Once you've shown a spotlight on what's happening on Haiti and gotten the people of the world to pour out billions of dollars that I predict will come in in the next week with your leadership, you will then be able to move on to the United States and help with the damage that's taken place from the hurricane that hits the East Coast. In my view and from my gut, this is the right thing to do because Haiti has been absolutely used and abused by the Clintons. It's an international scandal. It's something that will really wake up the voters to how cold-blooded this Clinton crime family is. And it'll bring real aid to the Haitians. And you'll be able to expose the crimes they've committed while making right what's happened to the Haitian people.
This is such a no-brainer. And I guarantee you, folks, Donald Trump was thinking about it before we were. But we've got to make sure via Twitter and via Facebook and other platforms that he knows this is the right move to make. You know he's going to be on the East Coast when it's hit by the hurricane while Obama's playing golf and Hillary's taking a nap. But he needs to go to Haiti because they've been so screwed over by the woman he's running against, Hillary Rodham Clinton. In closing, some of the best special forces in the world are SAS in Britain. And their maxim is, fortune favors the bold. Well, our fortune is building a great economy, turning loose the engine of liberty, and empowering humanity. Something we know Donald J. Trump believes in deeply. There's another maxim, and that comes from our own army. And that is in Latin, liberate the oppressed from the Green Berets. Donald Trump and the Liberty Movement is all about liberating the oppressed. And if the people of Haiti aren't oppressed, nobody is. They are oppressed by the Clintons and limousine liberals. And Donald Trump needs to come and begin the process of freeing the Haitians and rebuilding Haiti. America led by the Clintons screwed over the Haitians. It's time for Donald Trump to reverse that. I'm Alex Jones, signing off for InfoWars.com. If you're watching this transmission, you are the resistance.